Hello, and welcome to D3TV and our first episode of Our Town, a new show that discusses connections between DePaul University and the Greencastle community. I'm Susan Anthony, and today we're talking with the cast and crew of the first DePaul Theater production, an original play entitled Gerda's Story, Memoir of a Holocaust Survivor. Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Our Town, which also goes by the name of Connections to DeCastle, bringing DePaul and Greencastle together. My name is Caitlin Close, and I'm here your host for today. I'm Caitlin Close. My name is Caitlin Close. My name is Caitlin Close, and I'll be your host for today. Yes, started about eight years ago, where I used to teach at Elmhurst College, which is a west suburb of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Elmhurst College has an annual Holocaust guest ship where we bring in artists and scholars about the Holocaust, and we bring in witnesses to talk to the students and give presentations. Gerda Notwan Lunar and her husband Charles Lunar were one of the founders of this project. And when I was there from uh, 98 to 02, mm -hmm. I got involved with this because of my previous work in Holocaust theater with Bob Sklude at University of Wisconsin. So in the spring of 02, we did performance. And this is when uh, the original memoir was published. Mm -hmm. And there were performances of letters from Gerda's parents and sister to her when she was in the Netherlands. So that's how I originally uh, hooked up with Charles, and then I did some presentations at uh, Charles Temple there, and then I got this job and came here. <laughs> so, Not stopping when the happiness is high, nor when we are in suffering and fear. So, so ever moving, moving rolls, rolls it, it on, on and on, eternal, eternal repetition, repetition, ever, ever new. new. It, it leads the stars their way around, around the sun. It, it may bring, bring life, and also death to you. But even though we cannot change the way that time and fate have fixed for us to go, with working and with humor, we can lay so many lights where happiness will grow. And, and even when we get the hardest hit, we cannot change, but make the best of it. Another one was when we did have a dog that was not never claimed by anybody. It was uh, captured by um, a policeman in the northern part of uh, the county. It was brought in, and I have to say it was one of the more vicious dogs that I've had to handle. Part of the reason being it had a harness that had grown into its skin. Mm. So we were able to mend its wounds. Um, still it would growl and hurl at you at, at a cage and you had to be very careful when you handled it. I was out there with one other person alone and I had just taken this dog out to a walk and was taking a few others out and then I heard this cry and it was that dog who wanted out and instead of hurling and you know, growling at me. It was crying because it wanted to be let out again. And this dog turned out within a week to do a complete turnaround, and we were able to adopt it out two weeks later wow. because we discovered it was really a therapy dog, and it is now living with somebody who has MS. That's insane. That is <laughs> awesome. I just, oh my gosh, I, well, I just love spending time out there and I sort of started to feel like they were all my personal pets. Um, and it was, <laughs> I was almost a little sad to see them go home with families, which is so horrible. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know that that's the idea. Um, I really, yeah, I feel personal attachment to most of the animals out there, for sure. Well, I, I hope that everyone here sees themselves as an engaged citizen who values journalism in our society. Uh, there are a lot of things that are wrong with journalism, but there are a lot of things that are done well. And I think it's important for citizens in Greencastle and all over the country to look at journalism, be critical consumers and how and what they watch and listen to and read and, and seek out online, and then look for more information. We can't just turn it off. Even if there are things we don't like about what journalism does, it's essential that we understand what's going on in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's essential that we understand the dynamics of the immigration uh, debate that exists in our country. It's essential that we grapple with the other contentious and complex issues about health care in our society. Uh, as citizens, we have a responsibility to meaningfully participate in democracy. One way to do that is to learn as much as we can. For sure. I 
started first at the Salt Lake Tribune in Utah. It's a sort of mid-sized metropolitan newspaper, and I was a general assignment reporter there. So I started on the social justice and health beats. I'd cover everything from almost cryogenically freezing babies just to keep their body temperature really low when they were born to general stories about you know, Salvation Army and social justice programs. So, you know, incredible array of stories. And I dove right in. I, I contributed to an A1 article my first day there, just kind of out of the blue. Well, here I remember um, coming in from a media fellow's lunch that, during orientation and like running up to the editor of the Depot being like, hi, I'm Christine McGangy and I'm really interested in newspapers. Um, and <laughs> I'm now, really adorable, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm in charge of it. I'm the editor in chief this semester. This particular Arts Fest is themed Art in the Green Castle for this year. And we did that on purpose to try to bridge the connections between DePaul and Green Castle. And in fact, some of the people on the planning committee this year are, um, there's a representative from the library, there's a representative from um, the high school art department. Um, there's a, there's a lot of people on it who are, oh, there's a GC Galleria in town, which is um, an art gallery in town. She's on it. So we, we branched out into the community in that way to try to get people purposefully, purposefully on the committee. Mm -hmm. But getting back to your particular question, how do they know? You know, I've been in it for seven or eight years, and I'm, I'm such an activist when it comes to trying to get the word about DePauw out into the community and trying to reach people from the community saying, come to DePauw, come see our musical programs, come see our art the gallery exhibitions, all of these things are free and up to the public. Come listen to these speakers. The Kelly Writers series brings in fabulous speakers. Come see our theater. So I spend a lot of time out there trying to reach out to people and say, you should be here. In the summers, we work at the Putnam County Fair. I sit behind a desk and I hawk, you know, <laughs> DePaul Arts to people. So I've really worked hard trying to, to bridge those kinds of gaps. I think it's just a really great way to incorporate Greencastle and DePauw together in this event. Like, you don't have, unless there's DePauw students going to the elementary schools or uh, volunteering in different ways, you don't get a lot of interaction. So it's just a really good way to merge the two and for Greencastle kids to experience art and like creativity. I have a really wonderful situation here in that I get to come up with the ideas and um, you know I, I'm, I'll come up with a rendering or a picture like this and, and choose the fabrics that I want and what it to look like. And then Caroline Good, who's the costume supervisor, the shop supervisor, and her um, band of workers down there, lab workers, uh, uh, DePaul students who are just amazing in the costume shop, um, create. They build what I what I envisioned. I can eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it, I protest I love thee. <laughs> then God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice. You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you. And do so with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Ah! Bid me do anything <laughs> for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Oh, Farewell. Terry, sweet Beatrice. I'm gone though I'm here. There Beatrice. is no love in you. Nay, I pray you let me go. But in faith I will go. We'll be friends first. Who dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy? Is Claudia thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain? That hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman. Oh, that I were a man. What, bear her in hand until they come to take hands? And then with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor. Oh, God, that I were a man. I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Talk with a man out of the window, a proper saying. Nay, Beatrice. And this has been Caitlin Close with Connections to the Castle, bringing DePaul and Green Castle together. See you next time.